All right, guys, so in the last video in this chapter, I wanted to go over the differences between what is a DNG file versus a raw file. And I think we previously might have touched on it briefly, but um, in general, basically DNG file format is a raw file format that Adobe themselves created because, well, with all these different camera makers as well as with all these different camera models, there were so many different types of raw formats out there that it's difficult for software companies to develop editing applications that work with everything without having to constantly be updating uh, these their raw plugins. So what Adobe did was they went and created the DNG or the digital negative format. And so basically what a DNG is is it takes that original raw file and it saves it into a universal digital negative file which is basically still a raw, it still has all the information um, but it is now a, a universal format that can be used with all these different third-party software. So, the the main difference to point out between a DNG and a RAW file is that whereas an actual RAW file doesn't contain develop settings, you need sidecar XMP files for that, a DNG is different. A DNG actually stores develop settings inside of it. So with DNGs, all the changes that you're making inside of Lightroom are actually written directly into that DNG format. So I'm going to show you guys how this works exactly and how to import as DNGs and then exactly how it works once you've done that and how you can save the changes directly to them. So we're going to open up Lightroom and for the purpose of this we're going to create a new catalog. So what we'll do is we'll just say use the default because actually I, I deleted the last catalog that we used so now when I'm opening it it asks me that. We're going to create a new catalog. I'm going to put it on the desktop. It's called raw versus DNG. Okay, I'm going to have a Lightroom actually create the folder and everything for me. So. Okay, now what you guys want to do is, if you guys still have the, the raw working files, I just have them right here on my desktop. I re-downloaded them. Go into them and, and download them. If you can, delete the two JPEGs out of it because they're not raw files anyway, so it's not really applicable to this. And then what you're going to do is, we have our Lightroom catalog. We're going to import these photos twice. And once we're going to do it as raws and then once as DNGs. So let's do it first as raw. So I'm going to go to import point it to the desktop. I put my raw folder right on the desktop right there. I'm just going to say copy and then I'm going to point it to my new destination which is going to be my desktop and under our raw versus DNG catalog and these are going to be the raws so I'm going to call it 00, zero raws. Okay. For file handling everything there is fine. Okay. I'm just going to say import Alright, so we're getting our RAWs in, we're done, now let's get our DNG files in. So I'm going to say import again, and I'm going to, it should automatically default to the exact same folder over here on this left side. It, it's not saying, okay, here we go. Let's go RAWs. It didn't default, we had to reselect it, so that's fine. Now we're going to say copy as DNG, okay, and over in the file handling, make sure that you have don't import suspected duplicates turned off, because uh, if you click this, it's going to say, oh, well, all these files are already in the catalog. It's not going to import anything. So make sure you unclick this so that it imports everything again. And we're going to put this in a new directory called 00DNGs. Okay, and we'll say import. All right, so now if I go to all photographs, it's going to complete importing, but it's fine. We can continue what, what we're doing right now. So if I go to all uh, images, I can see if I mouse over this, I can see down at the bottom where it says this is image 001.cr2. If I click on this next one, it should say .dng, and it does. Okay, so let's do a couple changes to this. We're going to quickly export this. I just want to show you guys basically how this works. Um, let's do this. Let's go to develop, and we're just going to apply some settings to this one more time. This birdie's getting a lot of love here, so although we're kind of messing him up every time, so I'm sure he doesn't appreciate it. Turn on my contrast, my clarity, vibrance. Okay, I just want to again be able to see the difference between the original versus this uh, change file. I'm going to select the DNG file and I'm going to sync that setting over across the DNG file. So now they should look exactly the same. Okay, now watch. I'm going to take both these files and I'm going to export them. And what I'm going to do is we're going to do this. Uh, we'll choose DNG versus RAW, that's fine. I'm going to put in a subfolder called exported test. Okay. And we're going to leave them in their original file formats. 
So I wanted to output a, a raw file in case of the CR2, and I wanted to output a DNG file in the case of the DNG file. So I'm just going to leave it as original. If I put it as DNG, it's going to convert both to DNG. I don't want to convert the raw, so I'm just going to leave it there. Everything else should be fine, and we'll say show and explore at the bottom so we can see it pop up right afterwards. Okay, hit export. Oh, it says browse for files or folders. What's it looking for? Oh, I think that folder changed actually, so we got to point it to a different folder. We're going to hit right here and we'll say OK. OK, I didn't put in the folder I wanted because that folder didn't exist anymore, but it went into our main root directory, which is fine. I'll just create the folder right now. So this is exported test, and I'm going to put these both inside there. OK, so here's our two files. Now, if I open up the raw file, I should see the original in Photoshop because the changes that we made in the develop settings don't transfer with the raw unless we save the changes to XMP and that's exactly what we see here inside of uh, camera raw in Photoshop. None of the develop settings were applied. However, if I open up the DNG file, we should see the changes because all of those develop settings are applied to that photo and they're saved inside of the information there. So if we look down here and you can see the image is what we have as far as the edited image here, they match. Okay, and you can look down on the right on Photoshop Camera Raw. You can see how it has all of our settings, blacks, brightness, contrast, clarity, vibrance, and everything. So hopefully that gets you guys uh, understanding exactly the difference between DNG versus RAW. There are a few other options to make note of. One is that you can actually embed the full uh, RAW file within the DNG. Again, it's going to make those DNG files huge, but it'll allow you to extract those files later if you need to. Now, a quick note as far as my personal workflow. I don't really do anything outside of Photoshop and Lightroom, so saving to DNG doesn't really, it's not really a big deal for me um, because Photoshop supports CR2s and if I want to keep the develop settings for a CR2 file for a RAW file, I'm just going to save XMP files. Um, but if you do use a lot of third-party applications that that can use the DNG format, then it might make sense for you guys to copy in as DNGs. But at least now you guys have a good understanding of how the two files work uh, differently from each other. Alright guys, so let's go on to the next tutorial.